Stevies! Welcome back to another video. So Miss Stevie and I are doing an, uh, an experiment. I just got off of my Road King and I just got onto her 2020 Deluxe and she just got off of her 2020 Deluxe and just got onto my 2016 Road King. And we're gonna we're gonna do some comparisons, which they'll be separate videos, but first thing I notice is this bike seems smaller. Like it even seems smaller like front to back to me coming off of the Road King anyway. Um, there we go. Uh, so <laughs> my biggest complaint right away is uh, there's no heel shifter. I'm one of those guys that uses my heel shifter every single time. And not having it is uh, you, you put your heel down and like there's nothing there. That's not a deal breaker or nothing like that. One thing I will say coming from a twin cam to a Milwaukee 8 is there's like no vibration whatsoever on this thing. I suppose that's probably just a soft tail thing, but kind of used to the, the vibration a little bit. Although, pretty sad, I've got 28,000 on that Road King and she's got 23,000 on this Deluxe. And it's four years newer than mine. But whatever. I do like the power that it has. It does have nice, it has nice torque to get you going. And it sounds good too. It's the Reinhardt exhaust on these sound great. Now this bike does not have a tuner. It does not. And it does not have a stage a stage one air cleaner or anything either. It doesn't have different head pipes. It just has the Reinhardt exhaust. We had every single intention of switching it over and maybe even putting cams in it. But we're not going to because this thing gets crazy good gas mileage she can go as far on this five gallon tank as i can on my six gallon tank and my bike does not get bad gas mileage at all either i always have you know more left than she does which i should because i got another gallon but it's 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 pretty crazy how well like when we got off i saw it half a tank and she's got a quarter tank so and another thing I can really tell, like it rides amazing, okay? Uh, it doesn't ride like a Road King with Legend suspension. It, it rides better than, than any stock suspension on a, on a touring bike. It, like I said, it doesn't beat the Legends, but I, I love the way these things ride. I love the way they feel. I love how I feel like I'm sitting in the bike instead of on top of the bike like I do on mine sometimes. But that's mostly my Lucky Dave C which I love my seat so I'm not I'm not changing that and honestly if I ever got a soft tail I would still I would I would find like a saddleman seat for it probably because I love that style of seat it's very comfortable for me but as for stock this seat is is very nice it it handles like a dream it rides great it's got plenty of torque I don't feel like I'm losing anything coming off of my touring bike onto, onto Amy's Deluxe. I can still take this one for a really, really long trip and, and feel great about it. I, I don't. I am, uh, I hope Harley does something with their touring bikes pretty soon. Like I hope they do the mono shock like this one has because I'm telling you this thing it rides just like a dream and, and she's got her crash bars on it so she's got her highway pegs on it we've got bags on it which it looks better without them but I understand why why she uses them but I love that headlight up there too now would I take this one over my bike I don't I don't know I guess if I guess if I had a choice which one I wanted to take I'd probably still want to take my Road King 
bet I, I don't mind riding this at all. I really enjoy riding this bike. It's fun. It's fun, it's comfortable. Um, there is some, there's more vibration when you're, when you're actually at speed riding this than mine does, but you know, my motor's mounted different. And you know, that's what a touring bike is for, right? So getting back to feeling the weight of the bike, I know on a really windy day, the wind moves this bike around a lot more than it moves my Road King around. And that's just, you know, that's just the difference in weight, right? I mean, that's all that is. But cruise control, it, it rides good. Uh, the power's there. There's just something about, there's, there's a, there's a lot different feeling and power between the twin cam and the 107, the Milwaukee 8. I, I don't really know if I can explain it. I mean, this one, you twist the throttle and it goes, right? Mine, I twist the throttle and I feel more. Does that make sense? Mine goes also. I mean, this one's got a little bit more power than mine does, obviously. It's a 107, mine's a 103. Single cam, twin cam, you know, there's a little bit more torque there. But mine, I feel like it. I feel like my bike is doing more. It's not, but I, I feel the power more. You know, this one, you twist the throttle and you feel yourself accelerate, but you don't feel it as much with the bike. I have thought long and hard, and if I had not gotten that legend suspension on my Road King, I would have traded for a soft tail. But I did get the legend suspension, which is expensive, but it's still cheaper than buying a new bike because you buy a new bike and then there's a lot of stuff you gotta do to it, right? To make it your own. Rev matching in this one is way different as you guys just saw. Which, that would just be, you know, taking, taking some time to get used to. All in all, I really love this bike. I love the Miss Stevie has it. I love the look of it. I love the white wall tires. I love the spoked wheels. I love the white paint. I love this bike. If I was buying a bike now though, I don't think I'd buy a touring bike. I think I'd buy a soft tail. Okay, so I filmed this whole review. Did the whole thing. And if not for a subscriber commenting on Amy's last video, I wouldn't even have thought of this. Uh, I feel like it really needs to be in this video. So I said that I would, if I was buying a bike, I would buy the soft tail. But I've been riding on my own for four years now. Three. Almost four, going on four years now. Sure. And it's been that long since I've had a passenger, so I didn't even think about reviewing a bike for a passenger. So I'm going to amend my, I'm going to amend what I said earlier. And that if I was going to buy a bike and ride solo, I would buy the soft tail. But... If I was going to buy a bike and I was going to be two up all the time, you cannot beat a touring bike for that. Get a really comfy seat for the rider and the passenger because I've been solo for so long, I just bought a comfortable seat for solo. Because um, my butt hurts right, <clears throat> right now. She loves this seat. Love it. If you're going to ride with a passenger all the time, you cannot beat the comfort of a touring bike. You can't. They're built for long distance travel, yes, but... But they're, they're so much better for riding two up. If I was gonna buy a bike today and I was gonna ride two up all the time, I would do the touring bike. You know, there's people out there that do it. There's people out there that ride cross country on a Heritage or a Deluxe or whatever, a soft tail, and they love it, that's great. But as far as room and comfort, I mean, the, the touring bikes come with the running boards for the passengers, you know, they, they come with and if you get one of those ones with the fairing on it, I don't know why anybody would want one with the fairing on it, but <laughs> some of those come with tour packs too. So if I was going to buy a bike to ride solo all the time, I would strongly look at a soft tail. But if I was going to ride two up all the time, hands down, there ain't even, there ain't even anything to talk about touring bike all the way. 
So everybody, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more stuff like this, subscribe. Hit the bell notification so you know when we load up next. And until next time, everybody stay cool, and we will see you on the road.